I'm Marty Schaffer, and I'm here in northwest Montana, not far from the Bob Marshall Wilderness Area. These mountains are the home of a legendary creature, the Wolverine. It's been called a ravenous monster and a supernatural being. It's been nicknamed Stump Bear because it smells like a skunk, looks like a bear, and has the short temper of both. The Eskimos called it Evil One, and the white fur trappers hated it. But can one animal really be all that bad? We've never really had the chance to find out. The Wolverine once ranged as far south as Pennsylvania. Traps, poisons, and habitat loss nearly wiped it out. Today, it's rarely sighted below the Canadian border. It's gone from Michigan, which is still called the Wolverine State. The largest population left in the lower 48 is found here in Montana, and recent studies in this area have shed some light on this secretive creature. Explore with me this rugged wilderness of Wolverine country. It's the ultimate shed, surviving on the fringes of the food web. It's the largest of the land-dwelling weasels. It's a major traveler among mammals. This bear cat, famous for its unsurpassed strength and endurance, is a savage loner. I'm here to look for this fascinating beast and to find out for myself if the legends about it are true. The carcass of a roadkill deer will serve as bait, and a well-trained team will take me by dog sled into the heart of Wolverine country. Only non-motorized travel is allowed in the Bob Marshall wilderness. I pack for a long, cold trip. <laughs> The dogs take off after a fox. I helped escape by putting all my weight on the drag brake. Funny that they should dislike their wild cousin that much. Come on, Nicky. Come on, Yuck. You guys know better than that. You guys. You know better than that. I'm just about scared that fox to death. Come here, Nicky. Come here, Yuck. All right, come on, move out. Move on out here. Whoa. Hey, Doc, look at You made a mess of it this time. Nice mess you made here. Okay, okay. Okay. Hurry. 
quiet. Let's do something. No more foxes. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nikki, quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. As we leave the frozen lake and head up into the forest, the snowstorm blows in again. After a long, hard day, even the dogs are exhausted. Finally, this is Wolverine Country. Right up here. Let's make it into these trees. Okay, call you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 February nights are long and cold, with the moon and fire bright on the winter camp. Beyond the circle of light, the dogs are resting. Beyond that, the darkness is alive with sounds. Wolverines aren't supposed to eat people, and I'm sure they don't eat dogs. Koyak? A wolverine can be active at any hour of any season. Unlike many other mammals, it does not hibernate or migrate in winter. Grizzly and black bears are in their dens now, so I wonder what's making the dogs so nervous. I have a good idea. This night belongs to the wild things. I'll wait until daybreak to explore. My plan is to place the carcass in a likely spot, and then hide nearby. Some people say that wolverines cannot be trapped. The truth is that a wolverine's keen nose will lead it right into a baited trap. But it usually won't stay there long. It may break off its teeth the trap chain. Or it may even sacrifice a foot or leg to escape. The wolverine is primarily nocturnal, but maybe this feast will tempt one out of hiding. I position myself where I can watch both the bait and the trail that the animals will be using. A stand of trees is a natural blind. Wild dogs can go for weeks without eating, and this one may have. Here in Montana, wolves are even rarer than wolverines. A few small packs and loners down from Canada are all that survive.
Although it normally hunts live, large mammals with its pack, a single wolf won't pass up an opportunity like this. But I've seen wolves before. It's wolverines that I'm after now. I hope that this hungry wolf will leave some for them. The wolf is not even aware of my presence. The wolverine might not be so bold. They don't like open spaces. I'd like to move in closer in case one shows up. But first, I need to dress for the occasion. In winter whites, I won't be seen by even the shyest wolverine. Any animal that's busy feeding will think that I'm just a part of the snowbank. I move in quietly for a closer look. Another wolf. And on the ridge, a wolverine. It is a hard winter here, judging from the popularity of this bait station. The wolves' acceptance of each other is a sure sign that they're from the same pack. I don't think they'll be as friendly toward the wolverine. The Wolverine seems to be the winner for now, but it looks like it senses something else. Another Wolverine. Their home ranges average well over a hundred square miles each, and the areas of these two probably overlap. They scent mark to avoid each other, and except for a brief summer mating season, they usually fight when they come together. The carcass is reclaimed by the winner. The loser continues on its wandering lifestyle.
Wolverines are fiercely independent. Their scavenging way of life has made themselves, and they're big eaters. After a few days, only some bones remain of the carcass. It's easy to see the fresh tracks when it finally leaves the carcass and goes wandering again. But following the trail is another story. It climbed straight up a mountain, crossed over a pass, and continued down into the next valley. Then it went right down the face of a frozen waterfall. Just a short 20 mile stroll. After three days, I catch up with the wolverine in its makeshift sleeping den. Years of human hunting and trapping these creatures for their frost-free fur may explain some of their shyness. But the wolverine is not a serious hunter itself. Catching a healthy snowshoe hare on the run would require a bit more speed than it can muster. Unlike the scavenging wolverine, the fox is designed for long, high-speed chases. The so-called red fox can be the standard reddish-orange, or it can be a silver fox, which is black with silver highlights, or it can be a cross between these two colors. This is a cross fox and it looks hungry. The Wolverine is not made for the long chase. 
but it has an amazing sense of smell. It hunts by cunning and craft and thievery. The bear cat moves in. Busy burying the hare for future use, the hunter does not suspect that it is now the hunted. The fox will return to the food cache later, if it's still there. The relentless wolverine can smell food hidden under several feet of snow. Claiming the fox's prize, it shows why it is a steadfast survivor of this harsh mountain wilderness and the ultimate scavenger. Down through history, there's been a lot of bad things said about them, mainly by fur trappers whose trap lines they raided. But I like wolverines, and I hope you've been as fascinated by them as I am. I'm happy to report that the wolverine is a legend that's not about to die. In recent years, they've been expanding their range south of the Canadian border because of legal protection and also a decline in fur trapping. There is a bright future for this wandering, misunderstood loner. The main stronghold is right here in northwest Montana. But recently, there have been sightings in Washington State, Oregon, and even as far south as California, down in the Sierras. Others have been discovered in Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado. This unique species has endured because it can live and travel easily where few men care to follow. In remote and rugged, Wolverine Country. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.